Hi, welcome to Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Photoshop. I'm using 221, but this has been in for the texturizer filter. It's been in many, many versions of Photoshop. So the texturizer filter, what does it do? Well, it adds texture to an image. Very strange. And you can do it in a number of ways. So I'm just going to run through a few examples. Let's just undo that now. Just remove that. So there's the image initial. And you can go to filter. And you can go down to filter gallery. And then you go to Texturizer, there's a whole range of different options here. Texturizer, that's the key one. Now, what you've also got is you've got a different selection of brick, but uh, these have been there for ages and ages. Got a couple of those, four, that's it. And also you've got this. This is a file I've brought in, and you can bring it in via here. So just go to this bit, this little menu here, very, very tiny, tucked away, load texture, and you can select a file. This one, because any, PSD file. They're all PSD files. That's what it needs. That's what it uses. It's a pity it doesn't support PNG, JPEGs, and all the others, but it doesn't. It only specs PSD files. And you can change the scaling so you can see the effect there. And now you've got it there. Unfortunately, if you go over here again and go low texture, so you like that one, but you want an experiment. So you go for maybe that one. It's another seamless design. You got this design. Unfortunately, it doesn't keep or remember four, or whatever it was called. You know, four, three, two, one. Very original names, but it doesn't recall them in this list. And unfortunately, when you come back to it later, it's just got these ones again: the brick and burlap. But what you can do, you can change the scaling, so you can zoom, go there, and you go. Unfortunately, it only goes as low as fifty percent. It's also another thing. I'm surprised why they didn't add it, make it go down to one percent. Very strange. But 50%. However, you can go relief, you can, which I think is actually pretty extreme, virtually makes it wiped out, whereas you can put it down to hardly anything, very subtle, or you can just put it, say, like there. And also you can change left. Now, it's always, I find it pity that there's not more functionality here because I think that this really could do with a little bit more additional features to make some really nice textures. And some applications have got great selections of texture features. For Photoshop, it's got a few, but it's, you have to use different techniques to actually achieve it. So once you've done that, just click OK. You can also, just down the bottom, you'll see a little plus there. And what you can do, that just adds another layer of that. I'm just going to remove that. But it, you can use different combinations. And there's a whole range, obviously, of these ones. And you can bring them all together and produce some interesting designs. Unfortunately, there's no presets, so you, every time you go into it, it's going to, yes, you've got this option here. Personally, I always, I prefer full-on preview, but you can bring it in this display, and if you want texturizer, there it is there. Click OK. And now with all filters, you can always apply it a couple of times, so filter, and you can actually get um, a bit more of a high-impact design. It's up to you. And of course, you can always, if you want, you can always go to filter again and filter gallery and change the settings and apply it again. No reason you have to keep it the same. You can always change the scaling and add on top of this, click OK. So you can get far more interesting combination of textures using that approach. And of course, you can also combine it with edit and fade filter gallery. Darken, multiply dark colour, and so on and so on. You can create a whole range of different different designs there, simply by just changing the blending mode by using this edit option over here. Now, another thing you could do is, of course, you've got that. You can always go to a layer, and you can duplicate the layer. So you've got two layers, and you can go and apply maybe the filter gallery there once, go there, filter gallery a couple of times, maybe go to filter, and blur, so Gaussian blur, just blur it a bit. And again, filter, and again, filter gallery, apply filter gallery, and maybe change the scaling. On top of that, click OK. But you've got layers, with layers with this panel over here. What you can do, you can always go to darken, multiply. So even if you've just got one texture, this texturizer filter can be combined in multiple different ways just by using this. And also what you can do, you can also store it in an action. So you've always got window and actions, which is always super useful as well. So 
You can then run it obviously on any image to create all kinds of different textures. It gives a bit more depth, sort of uh, unusual. Now, what you can also do, so you run through that. I'm just going to get rid of that other image there. You've also got color channels as well. Color channels are great, but instead of, well, you can use this filter with color channels. So here's channels, window and channels. You can go to red and you can apply the filter that way, like right there, and just go back. And you can see you end up with a sort of slightly different, and you can, of course, go to the green one. So select the green one, go to filter, filter gallery, and maybe set the scale, maybe set the relief different. Go there and then go back there, and you can see great, very unusual sort of design simply by just doing that. However, I think more effective using the channels is if you just go over here, there's always different ways of doing this thing. But I'm just going to go, this is what I always do right side, new channel, and I'm going to selected areas, alpha one, click OK. Now, obviously, there's nothing in it at this point, but you can select this RGB, and I'm just going to go with there. All. And now, once you've done that, you can copy it. So edit and copy, and then go to alpha channel, and you can paste it. So edit and paste. Personally, I wish there was an automatic feature quickly to do that. Someone will probably put in the comments. There is. However, this is always the way I just do it. Just copy it in into the alpha channel. I'm certain there is some easy way of doing it. However, once you've done that, you've got that in there. Now, instead of applying the effect, to these ones, the texturizer, what you can do, you can apply it to the alpha channel. So filter and filter gallery. You can see there, you can just go obviously vary this, change the relief, up to you what you want to do in terms of setting. You can also change the thing, low texture. Maybe don't go with that one, go with another one. Go with two. So you've got a different texture there. Up to you. Actually, I'm going to go with a slightly or chunky design, that's a motion blur effect design. So you've got that, so you can see that sort of smearing out. You can also change the scale. Now, click OK. It doesn't look like much has really helped because if you go back to RGB, just go back, you've got nothing there. You think, wow, that's really useful. Well, what you can do, you can always go to select and load selection. Now, the load selection, alpha channel, that's obviously for that image. Click OK, and it's new selection there, click OK. And you've got the selection all over it. Well, obviously you can apply gradients if you want. If you want to add a gradient to it, you can create some interesting effects. But what you can do is also you can go to edit and you can copy. So copy it, and then I'm just going to remove that selection now and paste. Doesn't look like anything's happened again. Still, you've just got now, if you go to layers, you've just got this very sort of slightly, see, looks like. But what you've got is you can go to layer, maybe layer style, and bevel and boss. And you can see then you get some really quite garish textures just by going this approach. And you can change obviously the depth, you can change the size, and you can vary it so you can change the lighting. But that's a you know, you've got that texture that's on top, and there's a whole variety of different other settings as well. So it's obviously you've got contours, you can change the contours. Just run through those, and of course you can create your own. You don't have to go with, you can vary these. And you can see you can create different textures on top of that. You don't have to use contours, you just go with that. And then maybe you just go back to the very basic texture. And again, change the angle, move that around. If you want, something more slightly different. Whole range of different textures that can be added very quick and easy. And also you've got more options here. In a bevel. So this is the sort of thing, um, maybe it should be in the texturizer. This sort of thing I think should be in the texturizer where you've got a whole range of different options. But of course, you can always come out and use it like this. Emboss. And again, you can vary these settings. And of course, sometimes you completely obliterate the image. You've got different contours. You can literally explore a whole range of different options in terms of texture that you add to your image. Click OK. And of course, I could continue that for ages and ages. And of course, once you've finished, you can always, of course, flatten the image and you've got your design there. And of course, what you can do then, you can always add texturizer to that. You always go to filter and filter gallery. And you can see you can create a whole range of different textures. And of course, go there, load texture. Maybe go for a different one. 
on top of that. And again, scaling, relief, you can reduce that down. And you can see you can create more and more different unusual textures. So filter, and of course, what you can do, you can add other things as well. You can add some noise in, maybe add noise, and then maybe a blur, combine these different things as well. So you can always go over here and create a duplicate of this. So layer and duplicate layer. Again, apply blurs on top of that, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you can see different texture there. And again, go to up there, normal, darken, color burn. You can create very unusual textures using that texturizer. So it's not just a single effect. You think, oh, that will be a nice, can be used countless combinations just by using alpha channels, using texturizers, combining with other filters as well. And again, all these things, if you want, can be done window and actions. Just save it, save it to any image and it can be quickly generated into something, maybe not like that, but you can create all kinds of different things. And you've got a really lovely sort of slightly unusual. And of course, what you can also do, I'm just gonna to go to layer and flatten, there's other filters, of course, as well. You can always go, especially with all this lovely bright, you can go to other and maximum. And you can create, again, just by a simple slight touch up there, radius, click OK. And you can get a very unusual sort of glowing texture that's added to your design. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time about Photoshop, Illustrator, Finity Photo, and many, many others. If you've got any questions, Always please put them in the comments. Always appreciated any sort of problems you think. Maybe I went too fast in certain areas. Maybe I didn't explain something too well. Please let me know. It's, uh, I'm always willing to help and answer questions like that. Also, a dislike or like. Also, please check out the Graphic Extras website. Graphic Extras website, always adding new tutorials on that as well. And also what I do, often I, if I find various <clears throat> things and issues, I can always put comments on there. So I will put sort of things, add some additional information about this particular approach that may be of interest for you to read. So please check out the Graphic Extras channel as well as the Graphic Extras website. Thank you much.